Thanks for waking up with us. How you doing everybody? Welcome back to Stay in Focus for Jesus. Hope each and every one of you are having a blessed day in the Lord Jesus Christ as always. Today is um, Tuesday, October 19th, 2021. Tuesday, October 19th, 2021. For me, obviously, it's probably the next day or the day after that or hey, nine months later. <laughs> for you. But most likely this video will be the next day because it is building off of the foundation of our previous video if you're not familiar with that video you can go back and check it out where we discuss and we go into um let's just say later foundation for the law of the nations international law um the law of the gentiles the heathen nations so I found some very, very, to me, interesting things, and hopefully it can make, it can help you to make more sense of everything that's going on. So, <clears throat> it says, the current oath of allegiance of the United States is as follows, and I remember some of this because I was in the military and we had to go in his room and we had to say this stuff, and then we get, they gave us a little card that had pretty much the oath on it. And the soldier's creed. I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty of whom or which I have heretofore been a subject or citizen any foreign prince isn't God warring against nations like America because of their wickedness so according to America would Christ not be considered a foreign prince absolutely Christ would be considered a foreign prince would he be considered a potentate absolutely obviously he would be considered a sovereign or at least the government that he represents the government that he comes from the government that we also represent and come from as ambassadors of christ would be a sovereignty monarchy he told us that we will rule and reign with him on the earth as kings and priest that I will support and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States of America against all enemies foreign and domestic is the gospel a enemy to the Constitution of the United States absolutely that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same they could have word faith again so when they tell you that when they mock you for your faith in the Bible, in the Word of God, they're having faith in the Constitution. So you see how hypocritical people are. They support the Constitution. They support these different schools. They support the banking institutions. They support all these different systems and all these different documents and all these different groups or whatnot that have their basis in, in a document, in a written document. Corporations have bylaws. That they go by written bylaws and everything they support all that and they have faith in it but when it comes to the word of God they'll tell you oh we don't believe that book because it's written by man 
And people actually roll with that and think it's, think it's okay to say stuff like that. That I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by law. So, a lot of us can't even do that. That I will perform non-combatant service in the armed forces of the United States when required by law. Non-combatant, hey, whatever we need you to do, you're going to do it. That I will perform work of national importance under civilian direction when required by law. And that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me God. So it doesn't matter if you're talking about our God or their God. They're still lying. Then they said they, they took out some of the things. But what I want to do is I want to go down here to a few points. And it says renunciation of title or order of nobility. Order of nobility. Isn't Christ after the order of Melchizedek? Which means that we also would be after the order of Melchizedek. Who is the what? Is king of righteousness, king of Salem, king of peace. New citizens who hold foreign titles. We hold foreign titles. Because we are ambassadors. An ambassador to the government of Christ. That's a foreign title in comparison to America. New citizens who hold foreign titles must also renounce those titles by adding the following phrase. This is what they try to get people to do. This is what they're not trying to get people to do, but they are getting people to do. Not just through the military, but all these systems that are in place. People are renouncing um, their title and their order of nobility by the way they live their life. So, they are renouncing their kingship and their citizenship in the kingdom of God. They're renouncing that order of nobility that is their birthright, just like Esau did. I further renounce the title of given titles or titles which I have heretofore held, or I further renounce the order of nobility given the order of nobility to which I heretofore belonged. Now, we go down here to history. It says, during the Revolutionary War, oaths of allegiance were administered to officers of the Continental Army pursuant to a congressional resolution of February 3rd, 1778. An example appears below. I want you to pay attention to what they, what, what they say. And this still goes on. Now, we've seen where um, they have the renunciation of title or orders of nobility, right? You won't put it all together, but y'all just bear with me. So, James Glentworth, the lieutenant of the 6th Pena Regiment, he says, do acknowledge the United States of America to be free, independent, and sovereign states and declare that the people thereof owe no allegiance or obedience to George III, King of Great Britain. Keep that in mind because that's important. And I renounce, refuse, and abjure any allegiance or obedience to him. And I do swear that I will, to the utmost of my power, support, maintain, and defend the said United States against said King George III, Watch this, his heirs and successors and his or their abettors, assistants and adherents and will serve the said United States in the office of lieutenant, which I now hold with fidelity according to the best of my skill and understanding. This is still in effect. So when he made this um took this oath pretty much to the United States, it was renouncing not only the king at that time, King George III, but also his heirs and his successors. So anybody after him that comes from that lineage, hey, they are considered our enemy. 
They are considered our enemy and we're going to do everything within our power to defend the United States against, at that time, King George III and his heirs and successors and anybody that's attached to them. Psalms 83, anybody? Psalms 83. Now, why is all this important? Because King George III traces his lineage all the way back to Israel. So let's make that connection. So this is on the royal.uk website. It says the Hanoverians, Hano, Hanoverians, how do you pronounce it? came to power in difficult circumstances that looked set to undermine the stability of British society. The first of the kings, George I, was only 52nd in line to the throne, but the nearest Protestant according to the Act of Settlement. Like I told you before, the Protestant Reformation, the, the modern day Protestant Reformation, has nothing to do really with, with what was going on because Remember Martin Luther, he still believed that the Catholic Church was the mother church. The original Protestant Reformation uh, was to keep these people who were blood, they were blood, they were royalty, they were blood, it was to keep them off of the throne. That was the original Protestant movement. They were protesting against them. Because they were always trying to get in that throne and to establish Catholicism on the throne. That was the original Protestant movement, not the Protestant Reformation that you're familiar with in regards to Martin Luther. Martin Luther pretty much took it and then he did his own thing. He did, he did his own thing. And the Bible speaks about that in many places. That men would go out from us and draw to themselves disciples. Martin Luther didn't reject the Catholic Church uh, in its entirety. I mean the Catholic Church, I mean the, the wicked Catholic Church. Because if you go look up Catholic, it means universal, the universal church, meaning the collective body of believers. And that's what the royalty, the ones who are the Protestants, they believed in that. But they didn't believe in the Catholic Church in regards to the paganism and all this other stuff that was going on. Remember King James' mama and everything, that whole situation, you know, on, on that side of the family, what happened? So, <clears throat> it says, two descendants of James II, the deposed Stuart King, threatened to take the throne in 1715 and 1745 and were supported by a number of Jacobites throughout the realm. The term Jacobite is derived from Jacobus, the Latin form of James. For all that, the Hanoverian period was remarkably stable, not least because of the longevity of its kings. From 1714 through 1901, there were only six monarchs, one of whom, George III, remained the longest reigning king in British history. Queen Victoria then surpassed her grandfather in both age and length of reign. This, this is where I believe, on my wife's side, her, you know, her um, family descend from 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 this family from this house as they as they call it y'all know my wife's last name is victoria not only because it's victoria but me tracing it back and you know the things the lord has shown me like i told you before what happened between me and my wife it was a combining of two royal houses combining of two royal houses because obviously two royal houses together are stronger than you know one by itself and we came together in Christ. So Christ is over us. So if anybody comes against our royal house, then they have to deal with Christ and everybody that's attached to him. Or right, just so you can see this, this is the house of Hanover, where of German descent, who succeeded the house of Stuart as kings of Great Britain in 1714. So it's telling you the era that they're coming from most people they associate when you say Germany automatically think about white people <laughs> that's crazy when Europe is named after a black woman and we have shown that and discussed that many times and 
there's many historical records showing you these ancient black European nobility that was there and the, the family crest and all these different things. So again, all I want to do on this point is show you that you have the house of Stuart and then once the house of Stuart fell, then the house of Hanover, they took over. They took over. So you had all this turmoil going on. Everything was falling apart because now the people was about to be, all the people about to be sent into captivity. So people aren't telling you the correct history because they're all, all they're telling you is, oh, King James and, you know, slaves and the Bible and stuff like that. But they ain't telling you the rest of the history about what was really going on. The modern day founding fathers of America, who we know as um, white men, they rebelled against black monarchy. They rebelled against black monarchy. So the House of Stuart, also spelled Stuart or Stuart, was a royal house of Scotland from 1371 and of England from 1603. It was interrupted in 1649 by the establishment of the Commonwealth <clears throat> but was restored in 1660. It ended in 1714 when the British crown passed through the house of Hanover. Remember what Benjamin Franklin told you that during this time period most of the people of the world were black. So talk about the first the spelling of the name and everything. Um, it says the family can be traced back to 11th century Brittany where for at least four generations they were stewards to the Counts of Dahl. In the early 12th century they appeared in England and Walter, third son of the fourth steward of Dahl, entered the service of David I, King of Scots, and was later appointed his steward, an office that was confirmed to his family by King Malcolm IV in 1157. A lot of people don't know this, but Malcolm X, from my studies, he also comes from this lineage. He all, he also comes from this lineage. Um, not only because his name is you know Malcolm, but just some some other studies and stuff that I that I did. I don't know if Malcolm X knew it or his family knows it, but yeah, that's why Malcolm X. Well, one of the reasons Malcolm X was used, why he was so powerful, um, you know, powerful speaking to the people and getting the people's uh, people's attention. Uh, because of that spirit that was in him, it's just that he used it the wrong way. And it's also, also interesting that Malcolm X rejected Christ, but his daddy was a pastor. Now, you can make the argument if his daddy was a legit pastor or not, but his daddy was a pastor. He preached, he preached about Jesus, and he also, if I remember correctly, his dad was big on the whole what we could what we would say and consider and call back to africa you know that we as africans you know people argue about that we need to do for ourselves we need to get together you know go back to africa and stuff like that and, you know and get out this this country and everything so if he if he preached that which he did that means that he knew who we were he who we were as a people or he at least came across the information. I can, I can guarantee that. Guarantee that. Because anybody that studies that, that information always comes up. So, um, talks a little bit about the family. Uh, talk about the direct mail line terminated with the death of James V in 1542. So, according to them, it, it terminated. Um, then it says in 1603, James V.I. through his great grandmother, Margaret Tudor, daughter of Henry V.I.I. of England, inherited the English throne as King James I. After the execution in 1649 of James' son, Charles I, the Stuarts were excluded from the throne until the restoration of Charles II in 1660. Charles II was succeeded in 1685 by his Roman Catholic brother, James II, who so alienated the sympathies 
of his subjects that in 1688 William, Prince of Orange, was invited to come to the rescue of the laws and religion of England. James fled, and by the Bill of Rights and the Act of Settlement, which denied the crown to any Roman Catholic, he and his descendants were excluded from the throne. You see that? This is still in effect where anybody that is from that lineage cannot sit on the throne if they are a Roman Catholic, if they are a pagan, if they worship a false god. This is the same thing that the Bible teaches. It goes on to say, but Stuart still ruled in England and Scotland for William was the son of Charles II, sister Mary, and his wife Mary was James II, elder daughter. They became joint sovereigns as William III and Mary II. They left no issue in the act of settlement, secured the, the secession to Mary's sister Anne, and on her death without issue to Sophia, electress of Hanover, a granddaughter of James II. Sophia's son and heir became George I, first of the British House of Hanover. So you can see the direct relations of different families. And they are obviously intermarrying amongst each other. List of Scottish monarchs. The monarch of Scotland was the head of state of the Kingdom of Scotland. According to, according to tradition, the first King of Scots was Kenneth the first MacAlpin, Mac, son of, as I showed y'all with my with my name, I have a have a double surname, Kel son, son of Kel, and then it was changed to King because my mom my mom married my dad Nathaniel King, but before that it was Kel son, Delta McNeil, Kel son, son of Kel, Mac Neil. Son of Neil, or son of Nail. And then I went through the door, the delta, the door, right? To become the king that I am. So, son of Kel went through the door to become a king through the king. My name tells the whole story, just the same way we see in the Bible. And many of your names. They tell stories. You just haven't looked into it. Um, and your name tells a story in regards to, to your identity in Christ and what you're supposed to be doing. Like, how do I have a double Scottish name? And even with my family, I, when I'm looking at the different names, they all trace back to the same place. Now, somebody will make the argument and say, oh, because your ancestors were slaves to the people. Well, I don't, I don't agree with that because I found much evidence asking you know, my people and doing research, and they say we didn't, we didn't really have a lot of slaves in our family like that. And I'm talking about going back generations. They're like, no. I said, well, so and so, no, so and so, no, so no. I'm like, oh, what do you mean? What do you mean, no? We all ended up in slavery, but we all didn't come over on the ship at the same time. Because we come from different houses, different families, different lineages and everything. So I can't speak for everybody else, but I can trace mine. Um, so it says he founded the state in 1843. Historically, the kingdom of Scotland is thought to have grown out of an earlier kingdom of the Picts. Though in reality, the distinction is a product of later medieval myth, allegedly and confusion from a change in nomenclature. Well, they said King King of the Picts became King of Alba under Donald II when Annals switched from Latin to vernacular around the end of the 9th century, by which time the word Alba in Scottish Gaelic had come to refer to the Kingdom of the Picts rather than Britain, its older meaning. So this older meaning was the Kingdom of the what? Kingdom of the what? You see it. So it all ties together. They're trying to argue whatever, blah, 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 blah. We ain't really studying all that. We know who we are as a people. We, we, we know this stuff. 
So it says the kingdom of the Picts just became known as kingdom of Alba in Scottish Gaelic, which later became known in Scots and English as Scotland. So land of the Scots. So we have to ask, well, who are the Scots? Where they come from? And there's much historical um, information, much historical knowledge to show you that. But if it was if it was a big issue, as they tried to make like, oh no, it's not the same people, and it shouldn't been changed. It was you know saying medieval myth. Then they would have clarified that, because they would have you know when they when those people were in position later on, then they would they would have been like, no, we're separating ourselves completely from them. That's not family at all. So obviously, even though they were warring against against and amongst each other, at some point in time, they combined themselves and then the names became what they are today because they understood, hey, we the same people. Um, by the late 11th century, at the very latest, Scottish kings were using the term Rex Scotorum or King of Scots to refer to themselves in Latin. The Kingdom of Scotland was merged with the Kingdom of England to form a single Kingdom of Great Britain in 1707. Thus, Queen Anne became the last monarch of the ancient kingdoms of Scotland and England and the first of Great Britain, although the kingdoms had shared a monarch since 1603. Her uncle, Charles II, was the last monarch to be crowned in Scotland at Scone in 1651. He had a coronation in England 10 years later. So we jump over here and we look at Dub, King of Scotland. A lot of this information is, um, is contained in that super long 10 hour video I did some months back. It's a lot of good information in there. You can break it down and you can watch it. Obviously, no, most people, obviously most people can't watch it in one setting, but there's a lot of good information in there. Um, so you have Dub, Dub, Mac, we see it again, Mac, Malcolm, Mac, Malcolm, <laughs> Mac, Malcolm, which is Malcolm, I'm trying to pronounce it the right way, according to the, uh, dialect. So it's Mac Malcolm, which would be son of Malcolm. He was known as the vehement and the black. So, dub, you talk about dub, it means black. Now, depending on what source you read, depending on how deep you want to go into it, we'll go deeper into this later. They'll try to tell you one thing is that, oh, it's, it's in relation to the hair. But there are so many sources out there, especially with uh, Scotland, Ireland. It's such a, you know, a place of rich history that was preserved that in their records, it tells you, you just have to go read the records because they know that most people are going to read it. And those who do read it, they're not going to really put it out there like that. They're not going to, they're not going to put it out there like that because they know what it means. Um, so he was, what well, he was King of Alba. He was son of Malcolm the first and succeeded to the throne when Indolf was killed in 1962 in 1962. So, why is all this important? Why are we looking at um, these people, these um, ancient, these ancient Israelites, who came over, travel over from Israel many, many, many times? But really, there was a specific time they got up out of there, and it was before or right around the time that seventy A.D. hit. A lot of them. They got out of there and traveled over here because they knew what was up because they were being obedient to Christ, which is why great, the Great Britain area and everything, it was able to last for so long because they were obedient until they weren't. Obviously, there was arguing and you had different uh, factions and stuff like that. We've seen that with the Roman Catholic brother and there was many others that were Roman Catholic and stuff like that. But God must have still been blessing them because they last they lasted for so long. 
until eventually the whole thing fell and then the modern day royal families they came in and pretty much you know took took that over or whatever and took that history over and everything so we want to go to our next point so you see i got this image on my screen and what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in so you can read it and it says monarchs and pretenders of the scots right you see you got kenneth way up here you see alpin right there at the top you see all the different names right the names that were just mentioned endolf malcolm yeah, constantine the different malcolm you see dub right here right oh and then we keep on scrolling it just gives you the different families and the different lineages and we keep on going keep on going you see robert the second robert the third james james the second james the third james iv james v mary james v i then you see a little this little legend right here on the left i mean excuse me on the right you see the house of alpin the house of grew up the house of Severy, house of bruce house of macbeth house of dunkeld house of valio and the house of stewart house of stewart right so all these families are connected and we proved that i mean we we, we proved it <laughs> i know i've i proved y'all seen the videos i got the evidence i got the the contact with the people that have these different books and everything and they showed you i showed you how they change it all this stuff so it makes sense that when we see the evidence overwhelming evidence that king james was black we see charles was black we see all these different people they were black and then we go back up to dub right dub dub the black that he also was black it, ma it makes sense not just from a historical standpoint but it makes sense spiritually because we're being led by the spirit we're, li we're being led by the spirit so we go over to this one right here it's going to show you the same thing i'm gonna zoom in going all the way up let me move a little thing right here kenneth donald constantine the same names Constantine II, Malcolm, Endolf, they go dub. It treasures all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. You get Mary and you got what? James VI, King James. And it has the rest of them. You see at the bottom the different houses and how they came to be. How they came to be. So when we're talking about they having this oath and taking this oath to support the constitution what's really going on because it said the success the successors all the successors and heirs and anybody that supports them after him according to you know saying that time period and who they were uh were who they used to serve so that would mean us which ties directly in with the scriptures so the constitution is in direct contradiction the constitution is a document that you could say officially officially legally and lawfully wages war against god's people and that's exactly what we're seeing because we know that we were not included in the constitution why because they were they were trying to get from under us they were trying to get from under us, get from under black monarchy rulership. Keep not thy silence, O God. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. The constitution is crafty counsel. Because you actually got people believing it. 
You got the very people who are supposed to be the heirs and have the birthright, believing in supporting the Constitution and giving away, denouncing, legally, legally and lawfully, denouncing their birthright. Not only by defending the Constitution, but by taking on the mindset and the spirit of America. They have said what they say, Lord. They said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. The Constitution prevents you from being a nation because you can't see and support the Constitution and say that you're going to go over and you're going to start your own nation. Because you're starting your own nation, the nation of Israel, you're going to have your own Constitution. You're going to have your own laws that are going to, they're going to gut, they're going to, going to, going to excuse me, that are going to govern how the nation of Israel conducts itself. So you're not going to be sitting there worried about the Constitution of the United States because you got your own, we call it, Constitution. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. They don't want us to be a nation because we know that we have our God and that we will be the superpower of the world and not them. So they will be subject to us, which is what they don't want because they end up waging war and then we we'll end up destroying them. They're not going to give up the position, so they have to be brought down by force. That what that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. They have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarites, Gabal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistine with the inhabitants of Tyre. A lot of this is different branches of that Shemite lineage. Ashur also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot, Selah. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jabin at the brook of Kisan, which perished at Endor, they became as dung for the earth. Make them, make them like, like, like feces. Well, they, they just rot. That's what he's saying. He's, he's being pretty graphic here. Make their nobles like Oreb and like Zeb, yea, all the princes of Z as Zeba and as Zalmunna, who said, let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. Oh my God, make them like a wheel as a stubble before the wind. That's exactly what happened. They end up taking us in their possession. You know, later down the line. Because a lot of the early, early slaveholders in America, they were black people. If y'all didn't know that. I gotta understand real history, not what they've been telling you. These people, they're gonna try to take credit for everything and say, yeah, we did it, it was us, it was us, it was us. Like, how was it y'all when some of the biggest slaveholders in America, before they came over, were black people who had a whole bunch of money? Where they get this money from? Because they were coming over from Europe, they were coming over from England, these different places, these different families, and they were establishing uh, societies, high societies, over here in America. They had that old money. Y'all know that. Those who study it. We'll get to it one day Lord willing. And there's videos out there that people put out there that are good. Just you know watch it with a grain of salt. Some excellent videos where people break this stuff down. One of the guys videos I, I shared a while back. And he um, you know he, he flagged my video because I used, he used his information. I used his clip. And I told the truth. Like you're trying to lead people away from the Bible. You're trying to lead people away from the Bible. He does excellent research. Lots of good books. Some of you know who I'm referring to. I ain't going to mention his name. But uh, he, he does like two, three hour videos. And man, they keep you on the edge of your seat with the, the, knowledge, the knowledge and everything that he's bringing forth in the research. So I give the brother props for that. But all that other stuff, I, I ain't rolling with that. Because he's trying to pretty much tell us that America is the promised land because we were over here. We know that. Joseph was coming to, to America way back then. A lot of the, the food and everything they were using during that drought period, and then they had seven years of plenty and seven years of famine, a lot of that they was getting from the Americas. Food that wasn't even native to Africa was over there during that time period. Um, oh my God, make them like a wheel as the stubble before the wind, as the fire burneth a wood, and as the flame set up the mountains on fire so persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm fear their faces with shame that they may seek thy name O Lord let them be confounded in trouble forever yea 
let them be put to shame and perish. Why? That men, they, that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. So let their punishment be just. Let them suffer the punishment for trying to cut you off by cutting your people off. Because Israel is God's inheritance. So that's about it for this video. Just wanted to make sure I made that a uh, connection. We'll continue building. You know how we do. But with that being said, God bless each and every one of you. In Jesus Christ's name, as always, stay focused for Jesus. Now you know the truth is not debated. It is declared.